what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So even Christians um, like they call into the show. But here's here's one piece of advice I'd give you, Myron, and and forgive me if this comes across as a bit too forthright. Yeah. Um, recently, I've seen some clips where some you know Islamophobic guests have been attacking the religion, and and you give. I know what your style is. I understand it. Your mm -hmm. style is to let people speak. You believe in a free speech and all this kind of thing. I yes. fully understand. But there comes a time where, okay. You, you need to exhibit some of those virtues that we're talking about in the sense that, okay, if they're talking about your religion, because you're a Muslim, right? Yeah. Like for, fresh in the beginning, even Not though you one, know, he, yes. he did try his best and I respect him for that. He was, when I was speaking about, you know, the Bible and Christianity, he wanted to push back. He did want to push back and he, you know, he was thinking and he was really being, uh, you know, uh, inquisitive and so on. I would want to see a bit more of that, brother. You know what I'm trying to say? If people are attacking Islam, because let me tell you something. We need to have an, as much an emotional investment in the principles that we hold to be true as we do with issues to do with gender and so on. Like if, for example, I've seen you get mad or, or a few times with some woman in the, in your studio that was, I don't know, saying certain things and then she left and you, you know, you, you got mad at her, you got, you got, you got vexed. Now, let me tell you something like the companions of the prophet, companions of the prophet Muhammad, when they would, when things would say, be said about him, attacks, slurs and so on. They would get vexed because they have an emotional attachment to religion. And so, you know, Malcolm X famously said, a man that, you know, stands for nothing will fall for anything. And so I feel like it's not a problem if you want to bring Tommy Robinson. I've heard him. I've seen him on your show before or anybody else. But I feel like there needs to be pushback when they come with uh, nonsense about the religion. So, And if not, like, okay, you might say, well, I don't have the knowledge for that. Mm -hmm. But say, say for example, Tommy Robinson, you can call him out and say, so how comes you haven't debated Muhammad Hijab or somebody else who's also offered you that in the past and you haven't debated? Why are you coming speaking about it with me, for example? But so long as there is some kind of a reaction that the Muslim audience can say, okay, this guy, he, he's one of us. And yes, he has the same emotional investments as we do. Just like Fresh in the beginning, you can see he has an emotional investment to Christianity. He even brought out the pendant. Now, as we're talking, I don't know if you had it in. Well, the, I had the, some you know, verse, verses here for you as well. And you should debate Sam Shuman as well. That'll be a good debate. You know, um, I think so. so. Okay, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I've debated David Wood in 2018. It was one of the most monumental debates, I think, Christian Muslim debates in the last century. Mm -hmm. Potentially the most, you know, and it's been watched like tens of millions of times across different. Uh, different languages. So if someone wants to see a debate between me and a Christian, that's the most monumental one. But I get me versus David. I get Myron's uh, standpoint as well. But I get what you're saying too. But he he just like the guest speak because for the, our show, even you, you yourself, like we let you talk the whole time because you're the guest, you know. But uh, yeah, so I'll yeah. I'll address that because obviously um, people gave me some criticism for that. So um, and I know you mentioned if you stand for uh, for nothing, you fall for anything. For me, I stand for free speech. That's the most important thing to me, right? And one thing that I uh, I'm really big on is even if I disagree with you, I will divorce my emotions from what you say to let you say your piece because I think it's very important that people are able to say what they want to say uninterrupted and sometimes without pushback. Now, and I'll explain what I mean by not giving pushback sometimes. On that show, because people tend to forget context, right? One of the girls on the panel asked Laura, hey, you're banned all over social media, why? Then she went into her views on Islam, why she was banned, mm. etc. Though I don't agree with it, and I also don't agree with a bunch of her um, opinions, right, on foreign policy, especially with Israel, etc. Mm. I respect the fact that she's a guest, she's answering a question from another member on the panel, and though I don't agree with her, I'm going to let her answer that question. And, you know, to go ahead and try to have a debate with her about Islam and religion and everything else like that in the middle of a podcast where we have nine other women at the table and we have 30,000 people watching it would be counterproductive to the show yeah but do you, do you employ the same uh, do, you, do you employ the same exact attitude when it comes to people that are opposing you on your gender issue discussions like for example like I said you, you there are clips of you when you're speaking to those I don't know what they are prostitutes escorts what they are yeah sorry to say I, no disrespect to them because now sex work has become a thing yeah so uh, are they sex no, workers no. those guests that you have but basically 
uh, one of one of one of those episodes, you got mad. We saw you getting mad because she was saying things that were which triggering one? you. And my my point is that look, it's which, which not one, a problem which even one if, if you I do got, have a guest. But which one was mm -hmm. I getting Keep mad at? Keep in mind, which one? that's hours of content. I can't remember. I can't remember. Us, but you got mad at one, and you kicked her out, right? You yeah, kicked somebody out. It's built up though. It's not just like randomly. Yeah. So normally when I kick a girl out, again, this is the yeah. the, the the negative side of clips. When you see mm. me tell a girl, get the fuck up out of here. That's mm. typically after two hours of her d hurting the quad of the show, yeah. being annoying, over speaking, interrupting the other guests on the show. I really try to exercise a lot of t um, uh, patience when uh, women are misbehaving on the podcast and being difficult, right? And uh, when you yeah. see me blow up and tell them, get the hell out of here, that's typically been the culmination of multiple hours of them being annoying. And the audience knows that's watching, but unfortunately it gets clipped and they make it look like, oh, this guy just kicked her out and went crazy because she disagreed with him. And I even say it before I do the show, I will never kick you off for disagreeing with me. I will yeah. only kick you but off Mara, for disagreeing with me. Let me ask you a question. If someone, if someone came on your show and started mm -hmm. talking about, have you, are you, have you got kids? No. All right, if someone started talking about your mom, yeah? Mm-hmm. And then, like, sorry to say, went went hard with your mum. So your mum is this and this and this, and so I'm not even going to mention anything, yeah? yeah? But if they started doing that, if, and they were guests on the show, how would you react? Would you let them say whatever they want? Well, I mean, that's I, I don't think that, uh, I don't know if that's the, that analogy kind of aligns with what we're talking about. Oh, because but it's a free speech thing, isn't it? So, like, yeah, in a I sense, mean, you could argue, well, this is a free speech situation, you know? Let them say whatever you want. If they know her personally, or if, let's say she's a public figure, Let's say she's a public figure or they know her personally and they start attacking her. Yeah. Would, would you accept that or would you challenge that? People do it all the time. They say, Oh, your mom doesn't, uh, you know, who raised you, your mom, people have made insults mm. about my mom all the time. I just, it is mm. what it is. I, I think, um, the protection, of, uh, the protection of free speech overrides my personal feelings towards that individual. So you would have that. You would do that if someone attacked, cause the, here's the thing we, we have, um, this goes back to virtue then because free speech means you can also speak of course that's what it means of course so so there's no contradiction in free speech if someone says something that you disagree with that you challenge them or that you you defer them do you get what i'm trying to say so and, and by the way just on that point free speech is not a holy cow like free speech is not god do you get what i'm trying to say because now people speak I, about free speech i understand speech. that but muhammad you, you missed yeah. the point when she gave that answer that was in response to another girl mm -hmm. on the panel. So w why am I going to push back when she's saying why she got banned? Does that make sense? Like she said, oh, I got I didn't banned. I not watch because... that. To be honest, I don't watch that. I and, watch and that's the, the problem because people but, just see the yeah. clips and they don't see the context. They yeah. think, yeah, oh, you're telling me the you context. just stood there so, when yeah, she talked about Islam. But here's, here's but what I would she was say, simply answering speaking, a question. Bro, like... She was just answering a question from one of the panelists. That's how that clip mm -hmm. even came about, but no one ever puts the context in there. Mm-hmm. So, Do you understand where I'm coming from? That, okay, free speech doesn't mean, doesn't preclude that you can also respond in kind with aggression and emotion like for example like i said before if your parents either or both of them were public figures and they were being attacked or besmirched online yeah then you can respond to that if you are being besmirched so someone said, come and says to you listen you're a scumbag this this that whatever and defaming you and whatever and you respond in kind i'm sure you've probably done your fair share of refutations and repudiations in the past so what i'm trying to say is that we as muslims yeah like we in terms of how we consider our holy prophet like we have red lines obviously andrew tate has spoken about this at length when he said that when he came into islam one of the things that attracted him to islam was the boundaries were well, the red lines that islam put so for for us as, as muslims bro, there's, there's wars that have been that have started in islamic history as a result of things that were said and done which were seen or deemed to be disrespectful Okay, so th these are every man. One of the things that you'd put as like the virtues is that every man has to have consequences in it. And if if they think it's okay to come speak, someone like Myron Gaines, who has who has clout and he has status in the community, who's part of the men's activism movement, and go for his religion effectively in front of him, and that he's not really going to care about or something like that, that actually deprecates your character in a certain way. Because then, if they speak about your religion today, tomorrow they're going to speak about your mum. And after tomorrow, they're going to speak about your dua. Do you get it? I disagree. So what I'm trying to say again, is... again, context is important. I, I disagree. Yeah, I feel I like, I feel like you know, I feel, I feel like that you, you, there is something to be done in this regard, in it? But it's up to you. Obviously, this is your platform and your thing. But this is just my two cents on this issue. Well, no, I, I, again, I understand your two cents. But again, context matters. If someone yeah. asks her a question and she responds as to why she was banned on social media, 
then what is there to debate? Like she's saying, these are my views. This is what got me banned. Okay. And then we just move on because, again, that episode was not designed to have a religious debate and go back and forth. Me and Laura have already talked, you know, offline of our differences of opinion when it comes to American foreign policy, uh, mm. Islam, etc. And I tell her, I don't agree with you, sure. but I'm not yeah, going to hurt. I don't want to flog it that horse. I think we both understand each other's perspectives now. I don't want to flog it that horse. Yeah. Like I said before, if, if, so long as you understand where I'm coming from. No, I completely understand. And if, and if we, if the, if, if she made comments like that, right. And we were having a different type of show and there weren't nine other girls on the panel and one of them didn't ask her personally for her opinion because that's what she asked was tell me why you got kicked off and she gave her mm. reason why i can't really argue with her about why she got kicked off like that's not does that make sense so like to me i was like why i understand I, gonna... I, I totally understand what you're saying but someone can do that in an underhanded manner like for example the same an analogy can be applied back to the whole mother thing someone can say well the reason this is that because your mother but once again if someone brings it up you know it's it's a disrespect effectively bro like so Anything that could be considered to be a disrespect, like you know, famously Khabib when he was when he was with um, Connor, and he tried and Connor tried to underhandedly disrespect Khabib by putting like drink on his table and stuff like that. He responded in kind. He wasn't having it. And then uh, after when Connor said, you know, it was all business, he didn't he didn't accept that because there's a degree of seriousness that you need to exhibit on issues that are serious. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So. Because otherwise you'd be seen as capricious and frivolous as an individual. Like we don't want to be seen. Yeah, we can all have fun. We all. I'm a joker as well. I like to have fun, and and joke and have a good time. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But there's a time to have fun and there's a time to get serious. And so, I just feel like when it comes to religion and family, faith and family in particular, these two things are always going to be red lines for any man and should be always red lines for any man. That's why even the Quran instructs us not to attack religions of other people and mock them. Yeah, we can disagree. We could talk about the corruption, the Bible, and someone can say, well, the Quran is corrupted. And, you know, someone can say this. But to mock another religion now. So if I were to come and, and Fresh is, is a very polite guy, if I tried to attack him and say, you know, this and that, and try to mock him, that would be something that Islam doesn't allow. And otherwise, shouldn't be allowed in the sense that a man shouldn't allow it for another man. Now, obviously, I'm not saying anything about laws. I'm not making a political argument here. I'm not saying, oh, therefore, we should ban this or we should ban that. I'm just making the point that a man has to have his boundaries. I Can I just I, say one thing? Oh, go ahead. I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying. Uh, that's your opinion about the show and Myron's take. But we're, I would say this about the show. Our guests, we, we respect totally. So whatever, whatever yeah. they say as a guest, for example, you talk for a long time. I mean, listen, I want to chime in as well. But say, you know what? You're the guest while well, you speak. The point is, with the show, me and Myron, whatever guest comes on the show, their opinions, their actual, I want to say, mindset, or for example, their ideologies, is on them. They talk, people know our opinion, our stance on things, and look, people know he's, he's Muslim, and he, he does his thing. It's more like, you know what, she's, she's a guest, she can talk. Pretty much. Yeah, that was especially it. in response to someone's question, because the Islamic, Islam, as the Islamic community tried to come at me for that, and I was like, okay, well, they don't know the context that she was answering a question, and that's why it, it, yeah. it is. But, you know, it is what it is. But I mean, also, also, but also it might be that so. you didn't know that this is how you should react, because actually, Islamically speaking, you, you got, you've got to respond to that. Like, there's an ayah in the Quran that says, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتُ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ يُكْفَرُ بِهَا وَيُسْتَهْزَأُ بِهَا فَلَا تَقَعَدُوا مَعَهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ you know, there's a verse that said, if if people attack the religion and the ayat and the verses of God, and you see them mocking it, don't sit with them. People who basically say that, you don't, you don't sit with them until they speak about something else. Otherwise, you'll be just like them. No, I see. So, that, and that's where me and you disagree. Because I'm okay with platforming people that disagree with me. I'm, a, I'm okay with platforming someone like yourself who's a devout Muslim. I'm okay with platforming someone that you disagree with, like a, a, like a Zionist. I platform people even if i don't agree with their takes and i understand from a religious perspective that can be seen as as haram but i'm not a religious guy and my thing is i think mm. it's very important to be able to platform and bring people on with differing views right even no, if no, no, I, I i'm not against you platforming them i'm just saying the response to how you platform them like you can platform them but respond to certain things they say about islam religion prophets you know if someone attacked jesus like someone came on and attacked jesus christ the same thing can be said. I would say that that shouldn't be acceptable. Do you get it? Now, they can do it, but I would respond to them. That's what I'm saying. All I'm saying is I would respond to them. If someone came and said, Jesus is this and Jesus is that, I would get vexed on that, on that basis. I would have to respond on that basis. 
Do you get okay. what I'm trying to say? So, so yeah. The, yeah. I'm not saying they don't platform them. You can platform who you like. All right, so I'll wait for the, the debate between you and Sam Shuman. When's it happening? <laughs> I don't know. I never I never thought a man with that kind of level uh, was someone that should be on my radar because I don't know how many even house subscribers he's got. He's unqualified, untrained. I beat his best friend who was much more qualified and trained than him. So I don't know. You just mentioned his name to me. No one really uh, proposed that. I don't even think he called me. I don't even know. Okay. I, I was looking to debate Tommy Robinson, uh, you know, because you had him on your show. You said you're going to set that up. Yeah, Look, I was talking with him. Uh, it, Tommy Robbins, I was talking with him a few weeks Shapiro ago. Is the main he said guy. he'll do it. He, he will, it he's, he's, it's it's he'll only do fair it. that someone, uh, you know, like myself, should debate someone like Ben Shapiro, bro. Because uh, how many years have I been in the game? How many millions of views have I amassed? Do you know what I'm trying to say? So why do I need to get some... Yeah, I can... I go to the streets and talk to people like, you know, Shamon or whoever it may be. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Unholy Shmoly and these guys. I haven't got a problem. I've never actually turned down a debate. I'm actually in a park. I've been in a park 300 times debating anyone who wants to debate me. I go in the, in the streets of London, bare-chested. I come out and say, anybody who wants to talk to me can talk to me, bro. And in, it's called Speaker's Corner. I come out and say, anyone who wants to chat to me, anyone who wants to debate me, I've been there 300 times online. There's videos of it. I've never denied a fight and I've never denied a debate. Tommy Robinson denied both. Tommy Robinson, because he's not my size, I said, bring any heavyweight in the world, I'll fight him. MMA rules. So long as you fight a man that's on your way. Yeah. And then I, we have a debate afterwards. And I, and I will so say... I, so that I spoke it can be him. a conversational and it can be a physical altercation. We disagree. You want to put hands on me? I want to put hands on you in a physical and legal manner. So let's put hands on each other. If, if, it's, if it's dishonorable that a man of my size and my height, six foot seven, 275 pound, yeah... Someone of my size, if it's if it's dishonorable that I'm gonna put my hand on a small guy, then I'll fight anybody. I I opened it up for him. I said anybody in dunya, bro, in the world, come, and then we'll we'll get you an opponent. He so, wasn't interested in that. So when people propose new names for me, are this Shimon and this Shmoli and this and that, I've never said no to anybody, bro. I've never said I, I say yes too much, just like some of those prostitutes that you have on your show. I always say yes. Well, not, nah. <laughs> that's funny. Um, we do bring a multitude of girls from different, uh, obviously the OnlyFans girls are the ones that go viral, but we've had doctors on the show. We've had lawyers on the show. We've had law enforcement on the show. We've had women that are professional. We've brought uh, yeah, religious sure, women I'm on. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. Are they prostitutes? Do you, like, would you, do you go in like to the directory and for prostitutes and, and just go like, and call them up and say, listen, we'll give you this much money instead of <laughs> no, no, doing never. a sexual act, come on TV? No, nah, never, never. Um, you know, and that's not like that. How, how'd you get these? If you, if you don't mind me asking. I mean, I have a team that does it. So they, they go ahead and source okay. girls from different places, whether it's a college campus or out and about or whatever. That's how we've been able to get a, a diverse but, panel of women on. But also, they're not all sex workers. They're not all, some yeah. Some have degrees. Some have real jobs. Some have or some are mothers. We had a doctor on last week. Yeah. Some are, we literally had a, a specialist on last yeah. week that's a doctor that so does. They're um, not all sex workers. Yeah. Just that to be, does surgery. To be fair. But that's a common misconception is that we only bring OnlyFans girls on. But we actually yeah. do bring a multitude of different girls. OnlyFans. Okay. So are they OnlyFans? There have been girls absolutely that do OnlyFans, right? But we've also oh, had okay. a bunch of women that are that work professional jobs. Every panel that we have, there's a few women on the panel most of the time that do some type of professional work or, or educated, whatever. Because we try to have it where we have a different uh, women from different walks of life on the podcast. I think that's very important to bring different perspectives. But a majority are non OnlyFans. We actually got the date on it. Well, what is it? What's the percentage? He'll, he'll pull it up on the side here. Out of, um, out of um, 2,800. From ages from 18 to 49, 46 different U.S. states, 325 different job titles. And OnlyFans is one of them. So, oh, yeah, we've, we've brought on a bunch. But I, I get it. Like, you know, it, and that's kind of what it is with our podcast is like people look at the clips and they kind of run with a narrative a lot of yeah. the times, which I'm not blaming, blaming you. I mean, obviously, it's mm. a lot of content. You're not going to go through every two to three hour podcast two times a day. And be like, you know, it's, it's a lot. And I understand that, you know, you, in time is. No, no, I understand where you're coming from. Um, I understand where you're coming from. But was, there was something I was going to say. That's a very important point to clear up because I think most people just think they're prostitutes, frankly. Yeah. I mean, maybe we should do Dawah to them. Maybe maybe the, we should actually speak to the, the prostitutes. Me and ones, Ali Dawah. 
are we'll the talk ones about that doing some dawah to the prostitutes on the clips. Yeah, the, the, the loudest what ones. What goes viral is the loudest, craziest girls. Ones, yeah, the girls that are quiet, Humble, that aren't quiet, like that. They don't get a lot no one. Yeah, no one hears yeah. them talk because they don't talk. They're, yeah. they're like they're they're listening. They're listening, processing it. And then after the show, they're like, "Oh, we agree with you." Like, but they don't want to say it on the show because mm-hmm. we know, like I said. You know, women tend to be more scared of, you know, being exiled than men, right? They're, like, for us, like, being a coward is a problem. For them, being a coward is not a big deal. It's actually when their survival mm. makeup. So they might, they won't speak up during the show. But unfortunately, those girls never get light. The crazy ones do that, you know, are the sex workers or whatever. Um, we, we were talking yeah. about something I was going to mention before this. Uh, what, were, what topic were we on just for 